Hello and welcome to a starter's guide for Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. If you're using this software for the first time, you've probably opened it up and you're sat with a window that looks something like this. DaVinci Resolve is primarily a color grading software and it does that spectacularly well, but it has full media library capability it has a full built-in NLE editor, like Premiere. It has the color grading tool, and it has a delivery system. And that's the basics of DaVinci Resolve. It, it has a workflow that you can see along the bottom here. You have your media section, your edit section, your color section, and your delivery section. And the idea is that you work through these in order. I mean, you'll probably jump between these two. Um, you'll import your media here that you want and then you'll jump between these two as you grade various bits and edit various bits and then you deliver your project in a lossless format or a high quality codec or an mp4 codec for YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. So we have to have some media in our media library to be able to color grade it because it has to also be in our editor to be able to color grade it as well. So you can go to your relevant folder here, and in this case, I'm looking at my SSD drive from uh, an Atomos recorder. So within the media library here, I can assign a load of metadata to a clip if I want, once it's uh, actually in the project. And if I select a number of clips here, I can just drag those in, and now they are in my media pool ready for use. So yeah, I can uh, start adding metadata to those. It tells me it's a uh, 25 frames a second ProRes clip. It's just your standard stuff, really. It's just a standard media library. Now I can go to my editor, next step along, and that shows, my media library now shows up here. So I have the clips in there that I selected, and I can drag those and use those in my timeline. If I drag my first clip in, I automatically get a timeline created, which is the setting of the clip. So no problem. This is uh, log footage, by the way, which is why it looks a little bit flat and ugly at the moment. So if I can, I can put in a couple of clips, and I could, if I wanted to, do my entire edit moving around like this. I could do my entire edit in here without worrying about color grading at all at this stage, but I tend to switch between the two and actually make adjustments as I'm going along. It's probably quicker actually to just do them all, do your edit first, or at least get a rough edit down, and then color grade. So you'd move along to your color section, and you now see that the three clips that are in the editing, and you now see that the three clips that are in the editing timeline exist in your color grading section. So you have this one, this one, and this one and you have your extremely powerful DaVinci Resolve color grading tools. And I'm not going to get into detail on those in this tutorial, but, you know, this is where it really shines. It has You have your sort of standard nodes, which I think people find confusing. Not, not absolutely sure why. I think people from an audio background uh, who have used things like Ableton and um, have used VST plugins and the way they sort of stack along with each other will be quite comfortable with nodes uh, because you can have serial nodes, you can have parallel nodes, but the idea basically is that you apply a grade to this node and then you can add another node and apply some more stuff, a secondary color correction maybe, or you can apply a vignette or you can add, a, add a, um, an external plugin on that particular node and they run along in series until you get to your output point. It's really no different than, for example, in Premiere, if you're used to that, where you have a stack of effects that run down. You can see them all in a kind of list under your effects section, and they are applied in order. It's a similar idea. They're applied in this series. Uh, if I add a sort of another, if I add another serial node on here, then we can make, we can double click on here, we can do some sort of change in here. And then we could, if we wanted, counteract that change in here. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but uh, they just run along in series and are applied in the order that you put them in. That's how color correction in DaVinci works. But of course, the main bulk of it is down at the bottom here. And this is where you the sort of, I don't want to sound cheesy when I say the magic happens, but it is really it's such a wonderful program. It's a wonderful piece of software to be able to do color correction in. 
So if you're editing, if you're back here and you're editing a particular clip and you're sort of looking at this and saying, oh, I want to actually, uh, I'm not sure how, how this is going to look, this particular section, even though that's, there you go. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to look when that person comes in. If I now switch back to my color section, it's selected that clip and it's ready at that point. So it's really, really nice to be able to jump between these two and make the relevant changes that you want. In your editor, you can import media here as well. You can right click on here, or I'm not sure what that would be on a Mac. Might be a right click as well. You can import media here. That works great too. But a lot of the time, you may wish to go back to your media, um, your media pool. Uh, sorry, your media storage library, and import more from there. But uh, it can be done straight from the editor too. And then once you're happy with your clips, you have them all in order here, and they. You have your single kind of window here that just shows that one clip, but of course these all do exist in a timeline as well. And you'll, you go to this deliver section and you have your clips here and you can either deliver them as a complete timeline or you can render them out as individual clips. And this is where you do that. This is where you set up your codec settings and your export settings and you add the job to the queue and then you start your render. And just the point on Resolve, it's incredibly fast at rendering. I can be doing an export out of Premiere of uh, 4K ProRes footage, and it will take, I don't know, 20 minutes to render something. I can export the same type of MP4 out of Resolve, and it will take me about five minutes. It's incredibly fast at rendering. It's, uh, it's great. I don't know what it's doing different, uh, and I don't know if it's missing something out, but it, it's incredibly good. I would say the worst part of Resolve is the render sec is this deliver section. It's a little bit messy, and uh, it's not massively intuitive. This is where Resolve shines, the color section. But this editor section is getting better and better, and I will do a separate video specifically on why I like the editor and the strong points about the editor and a bit of usage, a bit of a usage tutorial around the editor because I have actually ended up now doing videos in full within the NLE in DaVinci, and I've never done that before. I've always put my clips in, exported them out, and used them in Premiere because I'm very comfortable in Premiere. But I've done that recently because I just find it to be an increasingly great editor. So don't reject it. Don't just dump, just don't use this just to dump your clips in and maybe listen to them and, and shorten them and things like that. You can actually do proper editing in here. <laughs> you know, you can create your final output. But yeah, you can obviously reduce the length of the clips and it and that is reflected in here you know you what you see in your color grading section is the same as the clip in here so if you drop this to two, a two second clip in here you will only have a two second clip in your editing section so there we go it's a very simple workflow from media through to your edit through to your color grading through to your delivery and that's how davinci resolve works it's a nice piece of software and it's free bar sort of basic sort of plugins that it won't do in the free version, but you can probably do those elsewhere or maybe even import in uh, an OFX plugin, plugin to do that for you. Not sure if that's useful at all, but thank you for watching and uh, enjoy using uh, DaVinci.